Hi everybody, so glad you're here again to read a book with me today. Um, and today I want to read a book called The Princess and the Kiss. Um, so as you read this, think about as you start to make friends and people in your life about, uh, about how much you, you, you give to them uh, about yourself, okay? Long ago, in a wonderful castle on a mountain of splendor, a beautiful princess was born. Her parents were the king and queen of the mountain and all the green valley below. The king and queen loved the little princess even before she was born. On the day she came into the world, the royal couple gave their daughter a very special gift from God, her first kiss. While the princess was growing up, the king and queen kept this precious gift safe in their care. When the princess was finally grown, the king and queen called, to, called her to their side. We have something very special to give you, said the queen. Up, 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 the royal family went and is into a secret room in a tower of the castle. On an elegant table in the center of the room was the same gift given to the princess long ago, the kiss. God gave this gift to you on the day you were born, said the queen, because he loves you so dearly. And now, continued the king, this kiss is yours to keep or to give away as you see fit. The princess stared in amazement. She had never before received a, was such, a, such a wonderful present. But you use wisdom, my daughter, warned the king, and save your kiss for the man who you will marry. Never part with it for the sake of, never part with it for the sake of a stranger. The wise little princess took her father's words to heart and kept the kiss safe in the castle tower. But there were many days when she went to gaze at her precious possession, she wondered how she would, could ever give it up. Finally there came a day when suitors began to appear, asking for the princess's hand in marriage. The first man who came to court, uh, court her was Prince Peacock. See the great muscles I have, princess, he said. I will always be able to save you from danger. I can run faster and jump higher than any other prince in the world. I am mighty. Marry me, for I am a man among men. The princess watched Prince Peacock lift heavy, heavy boulders and run the length of the castle wall. His strength was impressive, but the wise princess saw that his heart was full of himself. She knew there would be no room for her kiss there. So the princess sent Prince Peacock away. The next day, Prince Romance came to visit the princess. He brought dozens of roses and boxes of chocolates. I can take you to far off places, princess, he said. We will eat the choicest foods, we will see the marvelous sights. Marry me, princess. Every day will seem like a honeymoon if you're with me. The princess thought about what Prince Romance had said. It sounded very interesting and exciting, but the wise princess knew that honeymoons and wonderful feelings could not last forever. This prince would soon lose interest in her kiss. The princess turned Prince Romance politely away. On the following morning, Prince Treasure Chest came to call. He brought gifts of gold, jewels, and costly silken robes. See the presents I have brought you, Princess, said Prince Tre Treasure Chest. 
You will never lack for fine clothes. Marry me, princess, for I can give you the best of everything. Indeed, when the princess saw the beautiful things the prince had bought for her, she did not doubt that he could buy her anything her heart desired. But with all these riches, she thought, he does not need my kiss. My kiss will not be special to him. So the princess sent Prince Treasure Chest away to. Many men came, one by one, to ask for the princess's hand in marriage. One by one, she turned them all away. None seemed worthy of her kiss. She began to doubt that she would ever find a husband. One night, she spoke with her mother, the queen, about her fears. Mama, the princess asked, will I ever find a man so special that I will be able to give him my kiss? The queen smiled, gazing at the many stars twinkling above the, in the velvet night. Oh yes, my dear, I think God will bring you a husband, to have your husband to you. But if he does not, the kiss will be for yours to treasure forever. The princess took comfort in that thought, for she knew that God could be trusted, and she had cherished the kiss with all that she was. The next day, a common man came to the castle. He asked to see the princess. The man was dressed in farmer's clothes and did not look like the pursuers who had lately come to call. Strong and handsome, his hands were rough from working in the king's fields. His face was tanned from the sun. Who was he? The servants wondered as he was led through the castle. The man was taken to the royal garden where the princess and her parents were walking among the rosebuds, rose bushes. The farmer bowed humbly and addressed the king and queen. May I speak with your daughter? he asked. The princess's mother and father were surprised. Who was this man? He seemed common, yet kindness was in his manner. Nodding slowly, the king and queen moved aside and stood close by. The man looked into the princess's eyes. I have worked in your father's fields for many years. I prayed and watched and waited for one who could be my wife, yet have found no one. Then one day I saw you walking on the palace lawn. Your beauty was marvelous and your purity sparkled like diamonds. Princess blushed, and her heart began to beat wildly. I have to offer you, I have little to offer you, princess, the man said softly. I have no gold, I have no means to travel the earth, I am not as strong as many. The farmer stopped, and the princess was afraid he would not continue. Then he whispered, but I do have one very special gift that I can give to you. This is my first kiss, princess, said the man. God gave this gift to me on the day I was born. My parents kept it for me until I became a man. I have saved it all my life for you. Would you be my wife? The king and queen and the princess rejoiced and embraced the humble farmer. Was there any doubt that he, would, that he was the one the princess had been waiting for? The princess thought her, thought her heart would burst with joy. Yes, she cried. Oh, yes, with all my heart. On the day of their wedding, the princess and her husband were dressed in magnificent clothes and stood before the altar in the royal church, where all the lords and ladies of the kingdom had gathered for their celebration. There, with the sun streaming through the windows, they exchanged their kisses, and God and all the kingdom sang for happiness. The prince and princess lived happily ever after. Soon God gave them a child of their very own, and on the day of, the, of their precious baby's birth, the wise prince and princess received, received for their child a very special gift from God.
That's the end of the story here. And on this page is a, is a verse that says, Love comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. 1 Timothy 5, 1, 5. 1 Timothy 1, 5. There you go. So I know most of y'all are still pretty young, but as you get older, there's people in your life, right? You have friends come in your life, and you're going to have to choose how much of yourself you give to them, how much, how much of, uh, you, how much you let them have influence over your life and yourself. So as you make friends and you and you meet people, uh, start thinking about that, right? Choose the right friends, the right people to let into your life. Does it make sense? Hope it does. If not, ask your parents. <laughs> All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for such a given us to be here together today to read a story and talk about your word a little bit. And we pray to you with us as we uh, make friends and meet people. Help us to, to choose the right people that we let into our lives and the right people to be friends with and, and uh, to let uh, influence our lives. Help us to we'll find, find people to help us to grow stronger in your word. Thank you for your son, the spirit, and we pray in your son's name. Amen. All right, until next time. Bye, everybody.